For this is the day that the Lord has made. How many of us going to rejoice and be glad in it? How many of us going to rejoice and be glad in it? Let's don't pat the cake the Lord this morning. Let's just give God what is due to him. He's been good. He's been merciful. I just last week funeralized my mother, and I watched her in the in the intensive care and when she was going through what she was going through. Thanks of God, if you have a mother that's living, make sure you do everything possible in your power to take care of your mother and your family because this is the day that the Lord has made. All of us, we got to rejoice and be grateful in the Lord. You got to keep on believing and trusting in the Lord. We know that there's a lot of things going on in the, in the world today, but let's just give God praise. Let's just give God honor. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just for a few minutes, just think back over your life and thank the Lord for what he has done for you, what he's going to do for you in the future. Amen. Let's just give Amen. God praise. Amen. Let's continue to reverence the Lord. Let's continue to give God praise. Don't just sit down on the Lord. He's been too good to us, you all. If you can see someone on a breathing machine and the way they react and the way they try to talk while they're trying to tell you they love you, they're trying to give God praise. And don't, don't wait till you get there. Let's give God praise right now today. Don't just sit Glory. down on God. Don't just patricate God. Give God what is due to yes, him. Yes. His mercy endures forever. Jesus, amen, Jesus. amen, amen, amen. Now at this time, Jesus. these great men of God, yes. these brothers that I love so much, yes, oh man, they're going to come to reverence us with song and praise. Yes. And let's just get ready for the word of God that's coming from the man of God. God, the man of God has been studying it in order to bring forth a word this morning. Yes, How many of you Lord need a Jesus, word this morning? Jesus. How many of you need a Jesus. fresh rhema word this morning? Jesus. So let's just give God praise. Let's just give God honor to my Parkview family. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the cards, sympathy cards, prayers, and all that you've done for me as I've had to funeralize my mother. I appreciate you, Parkview. God bless you. Thank you. Not this time. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. put your hands together for these great men of God. Glory, glory. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Test one, two. Hallelujah. Here, I got these glasses on. I had cataract right, surgery. All right. And the light just sensitive to my eyes. So please excuse me for these glasses this morning. God bless you. God is good. Yes, Jesus he is. All the, All time. the time. I could have woke up from that All surgery blind. Yes. God is good. Jesus. He's worthy Jesus. to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Is his name. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is yes, his name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Got another one. Test one, two. Test one. Test one, two. Test one, two. Test one, two. Glory. Check Hallelujah. One, two. Check one, two. All right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. All right, y'all got Jesus, it going. Jesus, Thank you. Jesus. Praise his Jesus, name. Jesus, Jesus. 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 The devil is always trying to throw a little blockage in our way. Yes, but yes. we got to learn to move. Keep on moving. Don't let him slow you down. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. On the main line, tell him what you want. I said, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. You can't, yeah. Hey. I said, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. I said, Jesus on the burning line. You can't oh, Jesus on the main line. Oh, Jesus on the main line. I 
said Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. You can. Sick and can't get well. Oh, if you sick and can't get well, good God Almighty. If you sick and can't get well, you can. Hey, hey! If you need a doctor, if you need a doctor. I said, if you need a doctor, tell him what you want. You can. Call him up and tell him what oh, hey. If you need healing, tell him what you want. Oh, if you need a healing, tell him what you want. I said, if you need a healing, tell him what you want. You can. Jesus on the main line. Tell what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main line. Tell what you want. I said, I said, Jesus on the main line. Tell what you want. You can. Oh, hey, hey. If you sick and can't get well. Tell what you want. If you sick and can't get well. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. All my trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. A little awake at night. A little awake at night. That's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. Sometimes, sometimes I live awake at night. night. That's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus I know Jesus. Jesus I know Jesus. Jesus I know Jesus. For you, Jesus, he will fix it. He'll fix it for you, Jesus, he will fix it. He'll fix it for you, Jesus, he will fix it. Trust and obey, Jesus, he will fix Just trust and obey him, Jesus, he will fix it. He'll fix it for you, Jesus, he will fix it. Yes, he will, Jesus, he will fix it. Just lean on Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. Trust and obey him, Jesus, he will fix it. Yes, he will, Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Rolling in my way, I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. All my trouble, in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. Lay awake at night. That's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. Now deep. Jesus, He will fix it. Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. After a while. Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad. Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad. Jesus lived. 
Sorry, I jumped ahead of the maestro. That's all right. <laughs> all right? Yes, all yes, right. it's all right. It's all right. Brother it's Arthur. It's all right. Going on the road. Always going on the road. road. It's all right. It's all right. Heaven is looking down yes, Lord, yes. on me. Say that. Say that. Yeah. Heaven is looking down on me when my friends do me wrong I shake it off and go on heaven is looking oh I see an angel. I see an angel. 
heaven, heaven is, look, is looking down, down on me. Oh, heaven is looking, is looking for oh, down. to make sure you're doing right. Yes, yes. Heaven looking down on you. Yes, Lord. And your children are watching. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. I was glad when he said go in the house of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will give him and rejoice in it. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Like you watched over us all last night while we slumbered and slept, Father. Lord, thank you for touching us early this morning, Father. And the blood was yet running warm through our veins. Lord, we was able to get up, Lord, and just to give you your praises. Give you what's due to you off the top, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would put your arm of protection around us, keep us, Father, from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord. Lord, there's so much going on in this world, Lord. It's this virus, Lord, is all over this land. Lord, we have fire break in parts of the world. We have earthquakes in parts of the world. Lord, we have hurricanes in parts of this world. But I do know somebody who's look, sit high and look low. He's in control of it all, Father. Father, he's calling on us right now, Lord. If your house ain't in order, it's time to get it in order. Because he's soon to come. 
He said he was coming back to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. But Father, I pray right now, Lord, if you did anything or said anything to hurt anyone, we need to ask them for forgiveness and be about your business, Father. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for the ones that's in the hospital, Lord, that's there, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would touch them, heal their body, mind, and soul, Father. Father, I pray for the prison vine. I pray for the ones that's out there lost, Lord, that they would come in contact with you, Father. Because right now, what's important, the next hour ain't promised to us, tomorrow is right now. Lord, just keep us in your care, Father. Father, I pray for that bereaved family that lost their loved one going on. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them, Father. Let them look to the hills where they help come from, Father. Father, I pray for the under shepherd of this church and his family, Lord, that he will continue to feed us the word that we will be able to go out and tell the world about the goodness of the Lord. That he can heal anyone. He's at the door. All you got to do is just let him in and surrender yourself. Father, when it's all over and done with, I pray, Lord, that you would give us a home somewhere in your kingdom that we can continue to live in forever. These are the blessings I ask in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a blessed day, amen. Hallelujah. And I'm rejoicing, rejoicing for this day the Lord has given us. I am rejoicing. The Lord is good all the time, and all the time, the Lord God is good. I mean, all the time. Lord, because there are, there are times when things are not good in our lives. Those seasons and moments when things are not going like we want them to go. But that doesn't change the goodness of God. He's still good. Amen. In the midst of all the chaos. God is worthy to be praised. And I don't know about you, but I want you to help me praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us not forget this evening at four o'clock, we are to meet with our um, leaders of all ministries. We're going to meet right here in the back. Uh, we won't, shouldn't be there no more than an hour, four to five. And uh, we talked about that last meeting that we had for me to take the Q&As and give you some direction from myself. And so one hour this afternoon, looking forward to it. The only way we can go forward is with a plan. Amen. Matter of fact, that's personal. The only way anybody can go forward they got to have some type of plan. They may adjust it a little, but no plan. I'm not going to no going too many places. Uh, there's old saying that that someone asked a man one day, said, "Where you going?" And he said, "I don't know." So the man responded, "You won't get there either." 
Praise the Lord. If you don't know where you're going, you won't get there. So we thank God for plans. Amen. All right, we're going to get our hearts and our minds prepared today to be a blessing to the kingdom of God as we do every Sunday. The Lord loves those who are willing to give cheerfully. He loves a cheerful giver. Now, just think about that word love. God said he just loves us when we come giving to him cheerfully, glad to do it, not grudging it, not because we feel like it's a necessity, but God, I just have this expectation, this joy of giving to you and your work on earth. Amen. And so that's what you do when you give on earth. You're planting your seeds for kingdom work. God has only one place on earth he called his own. And that is the church that he has sanctified a place where we meet and we, we are to keep it holy and sanctified and the body of Christ which we are. He says you are mine and the place you go to worship should be mine. Amen? And so we want to make sure we support the kingdom of God through our giving, and uh, God will certainly bless you back in an awesome and mighty way. Amen? All right. Uh, our tithing pledge is coming on the screen. Uh, let us give cheerfully. Amen? And our tithing pledge reads as follows. I am... What time is it?
Let us pray. Father God, we come before your throne of grace. Give you honor, praise, and glory one more time, Father. Father God, we thank you for the money that we receive in order to upbuild and up your kingdom, O oh God. O oh God, bless some 30-fold, some 70, and some 100-fold. O oh God, we thank you right now for all that's been done and all that's been given. In Jesus' precious, holy, righteous name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Note today to be sure to wish Sister Irene Williams, is she here? Sister Irene Williams, she's not here? Okay, well, anyway, today is her birthday. She's 89. Give God a praise for <laughs> Sister Williams. I just found out Mr. Mahoney's birthday today. Yes, sir. <laughs> he done crossed over. He, he's uh, 61 today, right? But now you, he don't crossed over. You don't cross over until you pass 60. Amen. All right. Uh, it was good. Pastor again. I was looking for you, uh, for you and I see you. You and uh, amen. And uh, your daughter, Lisa, grandbabies. Amen. Good to see you with us this morning. I'm always excited when you are in our presence and uh, you are part of this church and this family, no matter where you go. And we thank God for it, amen. All right, to God be all the praise and all the glory. Have our, I wanna say to our media staff, you know, last week they had me all over the place and uh, they went and bought a brand new mic. I think they got two of them. And got me sounding good today. And I'm going to sound better by the time I get ready to preach. Amen. Uh, it's, um, it's three young men. I see one coming in now, brother. Brother, um, I can't call his last name now. G give me your, your last name. Love it. All right. You, brother. Uh, Castro, your son, and my son, Travis. I want to, I'm gonna get the three of y'all in church at one time. And when I see all three of y'all at one time, so I'm gonna tell Travis, you tell your son, you've been coming ever since y'all joined. I like that. I need to talk to the three of y'all. Amen. Give God praise for them. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. I don't know, but I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. I don't allow nothing to take that excitement away. The world didn't give me that excitement. The world can't take it away. Jesus gave it to me, and he won't take it away. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about God. I have never, I have never allowed the amount of people I'm preaching to live to dictate my assignment. Amen. Or my excitement about the assignment. Amen. And I tell tell you the story, uh, share this story again with you. And the men why we're coming be a blessing. I remember my first service over 33 years ago, and uh, we came back that afternoon at six o'clock, and Sister Babers and uh, men's, uh, Pastor Anglin, Mary Anglin showed up, just the two of them, and I preached so hard and Sister Babe asked me, say, is it with the two of us? Why you preach so hard? I say, well, I would have preached just as hard as none if, if y'all two hadn't came. Because I didn't come looking for a group of people to preach. I came with an assignment from God. 
And that doesn't change whether it's two or 2,000. Amen. Don't let, the pe don't let a crowd dictate your mood. Amen. Come on, come on, be a blessing to us, Ben. Amen. Not 
is the day the Lord has made. Now let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Amen. I was talking with someone yesterday and they were saying about how easy it is for us to get content and bored with things. I said, that's why we can't get bored with God. Because first of all, you can't ever get to know everything about him. And then he don't duplicate nothing. He didn't make two human beings the same, two birds the same. Then every day is new. Yesterday don't look like today and today won't look like tomorrow. Amen, somebody. He give us a little rain, a little sunshine, a little snow, a little wind, hurricane, just to change the day up. Amen, somebody. Sometimes he just lighten up the sky with the, with the lightning. Amen. Well, to God be all the praise and glory. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, as we go into your word today, give us the revelation that only you can give. You have all knowledge. You have all wisdom. We must come to you for spiritual knowledge and wisdom. You said in your word in the book of James, if any of us lack wisdom, just come to you and ask, and you will give to all of us liberally. You would not uphold your wisdom. So God, that's what we ask for. Wisdom of your word today. Revelation knowledge of the word today. And then God, we ask that our, we will present our ears to you. Present our spiritual hearts, spiritual ears and eyes to you. That we may receive what you say to us. In the name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. amen. Well, praise God. While you're standing, and I, I know those, my media staff do real good with keeping these scriptures on the screen. So let us start in the book of Genesis today, chapter 2. And let's look at verse 16 through 18. Uh, 16 through 17. Amen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge 
of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt what? Surely die. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I thank God for life in Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in the book of John that in him, Jesus Christ, was life. And he, the life was the light of men. Jesus came to us bringing life. Now, I want you to really hold on to that. He is life. Life, eternal life, and a better life on earth. This is who Jesus is. He brings us eternal life, and he brings us the abundant life on earth if we desire it. You can have an abundant life now that you're on earth. You can have eternal life after we leave this earthly tabernacle. That's what Jesus brought. Um, these two verses is where I'm going to start today. We're going to go through a, a few more. Uh, but I want to say something that's going to sound sort of shocking. But no matter how shocking it sound, it is true. And we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to walk us through it so we can see it. Uh, the first statement I'm going to make is that God himself created death. God himself created evil. And he did it for with a divine purpose in mind. The devil did not create death. The devil did not create evil. Matter of fact, we read it all the time. We say in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and everything that was made was made by the word. We say everything that was made, everything, that was made was made by the word. God is the creator of everything. Man didn't create anything, the devil didn't create anything. God created the devil, not the devil, he wasn't the devil when he created. He just created the angel with a free will and the devil decided he wanted to take over and God kicked him out of the kingdom but God created everything. We say it all the time. But I don't know if there's a register when we say, and everything was made by the word. And without the word, there was nothing that was made. All right. So uh, God created death. God created evil. Let's look at it again and you'll see it. It says, and the Lord God commanded the man in verse 16, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If God created good, he also created evil. Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eat of, thou shalt surely so God know what death is. Now, God created good and evil. See, when God created things on earth, when God created everything, he created the opposite of it. We would not know what good is if we didn't know what evil was. When you, when you see somebody evil, you realize how good it is to be good. But you wouldn't know what good was if you didn't know evil. God created light, then he created darkness. How would you know how good it is to have light if there was no darkness? See, God created the day, then he did the opposite and created what? 
night. So God created valleys. Then he created, if you never saw a mountain, you would think a molehill would be a mountain. But when you see mountains, you realize what a valley is. Amen. God, cre uh, God even gave us laughter. Then he gave us tears. A time to laugh. A time to mourn. If you didn't know what it is to be ha happy, know how you know what it is to be happy? You've been sad before. You wouldn't know what happy was if you weren't sad. It, and then God created, even gave us the sense to know what it is to have and to have not. If you ever struggle to pay your bills, then all of a sudden you have all the money you need, you know what it is not to have. You couldn't appreciate having it unless you don't learn not to have it. Been through not having it. Some folk who now got it, but used to not have it, they say, Lord, I thank you, because I know how it feels not to have it. Watch what God does. He, 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 everything he did, he put an opposite to, opposite to it. God says, I'm going to make a man. He won't know he's a man unless I make a woman. <laughs> God only made a male and a female. The, the opposite of the male is the female. The opposite of the female is the male. So God said, I'm going to make the opposite. I don't know all the things we done done in between, but God only made the two. Amen. That's what God did. So when God got ready to make good, he had to make evil. When he had to make life, he had to make death. But when he created death, and then when he created evil, he created death and evil, listen church, he created death and evil powerless. His intent was, I will make the opposite. Good, I will make evil. I will make death, and I will make, I will make life, then death. He said, but this one I'm going to do with evil and death. They will be around, but they will be powerless. Adam, I'm going to give you control over evil and death. You're in charge. Don't give death power. Don't give evil power. They are here, but you are not to give death power. So he said, Adam, I'm going to put a tree of good and evil in the midst of the garden. Life and death will be on the tree. Death can't touch you, Adam. Neither will you ever know evil as long as you keep it under control. It will be around, but you will have authority over it. Isn't God good? Now, God knew evil, and God knew death, but he took it away. He put it present, but didn't give it power over man. And he said, look, Adam, the day you eat of that tree, then you will release death. And you will release evil. So don't eat of the tree. And death will never have control of you. And evil will be around, but all you will ever know is good. 
Well, oh my goodness. Here comes Satan. Now, I want y'all to hear this message real good today. Because if you hear this message today and you walk in the authority and the power that God has given you, today you'll begin to take the authority and power over everything. See, watch what God says. Watch what God said to man. He loved us so much. Please hear me, church. He loved us so much. God said this. I'm going to make you the dominant force on earth. You are to have dominion over everything. God, created, God loved us so much. He said, look, nothing is to dominate you. Your life should be free of being dominated by anything. Our life were given to God that we will never be dominated by uh, stress, depression, uh, shouldn't be dominated by drugs and alcohol, all the worries and the scr- God said, I made you the dominant force on earth. I made you like me. I made you in my image. After my likeness, you are man and you are woman. And the devil, and the devil said, you know what? I got to change this because what God has done, he has put this man on earth and he will live forever. And he will never have evil come in his life and he will never have disappointment or sickness come in his life. He will never die. The devil says, look what God has done with this man. He has made sure he is shielded and protected from the evil of the world and the death of the world. God put evil at his doorstep, but evil can't come in the house. God put death at the doorstep, but death can't enter in unless the man opened up the door. So watch these verses here. Go with me uh, to uh, verse, chapter 3, put verse, uh, put verse uh, 4, chapter 3 and verse 4. Here comes Satan. And Satan says, and the serpent said unto the woman, because he already knew what God had said. He said, you shall not surely die. Are y'all with me, church? The devil, here come the devil. You shall not surely die. Well, what is surely? God said, I'm not going to die at all. I don't need to be talking about this surely mess. But you shall not what? Come on, church. Surely die. The devil had one goal, and his goal was to bring death and evil into the human race. His goal was to bring death and evil. He said, I, and look, he is death. He is evil. And he wanted to bring who he was and is into God creation. God says, look, you are evil, you are deaf, you are a thief, you came to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's the devil's purpose. Listen, church, he came in the garden to, inter- to introduce death and to introduce evil into man's life. And look at the very next verse, what he says. He says, watch what he says in verse 5. For God do knoweth that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be what? See, God just know that your eyes going to be open. And watch what he said going to be open to. And you shall be as God knowing good and evil. He said, so look, God just want to hold you back. I'm preaching now, church. That's all the devil comes to us every time. Look, God just want to hold you back from something. What he said, you're going to be as God. He used a little small g and a s. He don't use a singular with a big g. He said, you're going to be like gods. Gods, there's only one true and living God. He, that, the other gods are just like idols. Anybody can be a god. You can make yourself anything, but you can't be God. 
Hey, listen, there's only one real, true, and living God. And we ought to give God praise because nobody else can take his place. You shall not surely die. God just know. God just know. Now watch the devil. His whole plan is, I got to get death into you. I got to get evil in. Because God has put it there, but he won't let it in. And he said, you're going to be like God, knowing good and evil. But here's the difference. Why didn't God want man to know death? Why didn't he didn't want man to know evil? God knew it. Devil saying, you want to be like him, you got to know what he knows. Now that's the biggest lie I've ever been told. You will never know what God knows. You, you will know like what he knows. And then what's going to happen when you become God, you're going to become independent of him. You won't need him anymore. And that's what a lot of people think. That's what, this is the problem with Christian today and the world today. We try to be independent of God. We, we think if we just can get enough stuff, enough money, enough possession, we're good. Why we need you now, God? We got everything we need. Some of us don't even pray to God until we need something. We should be praying to God because he's God, not because we want something from him. We should just worship the Lord, that God, because he's God. If he don't do nothing for us, we ought to give God some praise. He's God. And, and, and man has this tendency to stress, work hard, get all the things they need so we can stand back and pat ourselves on the back and say we're God. That's what Jesus was talking about with the man with the, with the barns. He says, let me tell you something. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things which he has. And the man with the barn said, I got so much now, I'm just going to sit back, eat, drink, and be merry and say to my soul, you got many years. And God spoke from heaven and said, you've got to be a fool. You think your stuff give you life? This night, I'm calling for your soul. And you tell me who that stuff going to belong to. God said, I don't care how much you get, you still need me. I need a church up in here. God said, don't ever get to beside ourselves to thinking, I have so much, I don't need God. Well, let me give you a nugget. The more you get, the more you ought to praise him. Two people meet, they get married, they get, and they get their life together, they have a family, they have a nice home, and all of a sudden, they don't want to worship. You think because you have your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children, and you have a home, that's when you need God the most. If you, you'll lose your family when you lose God. Hallelujah. Security is not in the family structure absent of God. He needs to be in the midst of the family. Oh, somebody hear me preaching in here. Matter of fact, when the more, when you get married, you need him. And every time a child is born, you need him more. When the family grow, you need it more. You're going to be like God. You won't, you won't, you'll be absent of needing him. You meet him in the cool of the day. You pray and worship him. But just think, you're going to be God. And then you're going to know good. You're going to know evil. See, God hiding evil from you. Now, once you eat this, you're going to know good and evil. You only know good, but you won't know evil. Now, when he said knowing evil, what he meant was this. They knew evil exists. Because God says, if you eat that from that tree, evil coming. They knew that evil was around. They knew death was around. They had the commandment, death and evil will come when you take out the fruit. So they knew of it. But Satan says, no, that's not the truth. The truth is, he just don't want you to be like him. 
you take from that tree, you'll be like him. And so they took of the tree. And all of a sudden, death and evil is in now society. We live in an evil world. Y'all might well say amen there. We live in a world where death occurs to the young and old. And sometimes we blame God for death. God said, you blaming me? We blame God when evil things happen. God said, you blaming me? God said, do you know that once mankind messed up the price of your mess was my son blood? You blaming me? I, I took blood and mopped up your mess. You blaming me for death and evil? I took the blood of my son and mopped up your mess. Instead of blaming me, you ought to praise me for cleaning up your mess. Matter of fact, let's give God a praise for all the people that have misunderstood God. Give and praise for cleaning up what we messed up. Hallelujah! God said, don't blame me for evil. Don't blame me for death. You caused the mess. But I so love the world that I gave my only begotten son that whosoever believe in me should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I want to praise him. I don't want to blame him. I don't want to blame him for nothing. God is good all the time, and all the time we serve a good God. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, let's give him praise for waking us up this morning. Let's give him praise for the blood running warm in our veins. Let's give him praise that we can clap our hands. Let's give him praise that our tongue not glued to the top of our mouth. Let's give him praise that we have eyes to see, legs to walk, a heart beat no time. We ought to give God some praise. He's a mighty good God. Hallelujah, somebody. Whatever problem you are going through right now, the quicker way to get out of your problem is quit blaming people, quit blaming God, and start giving God some praise. Sometimes you got to praise your way out. You got to magnify God until the daylight comes. God said, I am not to blame for nothing that evil that happened. Some people say, God, why don't you stop this? God said, I, 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 never, I never started it. <laughs> God said, now you need to understand what done happened. Somebody said, well, God, can't you just take back your word? You said that the day he eat of it, he's going to surely die. Can you just cross out that one part and just say, I'll change that? Here's something about God. If he ever defy one part of his word, then none of his word is no good. See, when God says something, it is law. It is a principle that cannot be broken. And so, well, just change that God. Just change that part. God said, well, if you want me to change that part, you all uh, what about if I say, if you confess your sin, you'll be saved. And then once you confess it, God says, suppose I say, oh, I was just playing, I changed my mind on that too. God don't have to change his mind, because when he speak, it's law. It's a principle. It's right. That's why I said, some people say, well, now, you hear people say this day, this generation will change. And in order to reach the young people today, 
you got to have gimmicks and games and you got to catch up with what they're doing. No, you don't. The same word God gave 2,000 years ago. Come on, church. It's the same word that'll change young people today. I see a lot of pastors there, they're trying to dress like young people, put on all the young people clothes, be all dappy down like young folk. Listen, I don't care how you dress, if you don't have a word that will touch their mind and touch their soul, the word of the living God changes people. It has power. God's word is power. Not by power nor by might. By my word, says the Lord. Whenever we try to compromise God's word and sugarcoat it and melt it down, it don't help people. Like we live in a world where people say, now listen, don't say nothing about that there because this is how the people live today. These relationships have changed. So don't say nothing about it. Try to compromise. You can draw them. Well, listen, when you draw them, you're going to compromise after you draw them? Sooner or later, you got to preach the word. Sooner or later, you got to tell the truth. And the truth will make you free. You can't compromise all your life. Sooner or later, you got to get right down to the nitty gritty. You got to tell somebody what thus said the Lord. God said this, and that's what it is. Amen. Can't tip a toe all if you tip if you tip get on your toe, tip a toe around all your life. Man, you gonna mess around and hurt your bike. Got to stand flat-footed on something. Come on, church. Watch Satan. Satan says, you will not really die. Now, we knew that was a lie because God said you would. You're not going to surely die. God just don't want you to know good and evil. Here's the difference. God knew evil. God knew death. God still know evil. And God still know death. But here's the difference between God and and the man he created. God said, look, I, I'm going to put death right here, and I'm going to put evil right here, and I know it. And death and evil know me. I created it. But I can handle death, and I can handle evil. Death would never handle, God said, death would never handle me, and evil would never handle me. I will always, God said, I will always be an authority over death and evil. God said, but once you know it, you can't handle death. And you can't handle evil. The reason I don't want you to know it, and I know it, I'm God. I can handle what I created. But there's certain things I don't want you to deal with because you will never be me. And once you let the evil in, then evil will get you to hurt somebody, be, do wrong, all the things that we live in this society. Our whole society, from Afghanistan to New York City to every place in the world, our whole society is built on step on somebody, take what some belongs to somebody, kill them if you have to, as long as you get what you want. You can come right in the next door. People are just the same way today animals that way. One day, I, one day, I, one day, one day, uh, what I was, that was a, no, no, I was, I was, I, I, that's when I asked you this, I didn't do it. I said to Sister Baby, I said, if I had a big dog and a starving little dog and I threw the bone out there to, for the little dog, guess who's going to get it? Why? I, ain't want him, I didn't want him to have it. I went, I went to feed the hungry small dog. Why, why the big dog got the food? That's how our world is built up. People don't have compassion just because you're starving. Some people do. But that we, we live in a certain part where people will do anything to anybody, and that's what the devil wanted to happen. So Jesus said, look, God says, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. 
I'm just going to quote some scriptures. Now. Well, let me show you this one. God said, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Since you have allowed evil into this world, God said, this is what I want to do. I want you to go to uh, chapter 3 and verse 15. Put that on the screen. God said, this is what I'm going to do. God could have left us there. Aren't you glad God didn't leave us there? He could have left us right there. God said in verse 15, chapter 3 and 15, he said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I will put enmity between Satan and the woman. Watch this. And between the devil's seed and her seed. Her seed shall bruise his head and thou seed shall bruise his heel. That is such a deep verse. God said, this is what I'm going to do. Watch what God says I'm going to do. God said, okay, you let death and evil come in the world. God said, but I don't like it. And I'm not going to stand by and let the devil have a field day. He said, what I'm going to do, he says, I'm going to bring a redeemer between the man and the devil. I won't let the devil bruise his heel. On the cross, Jesus' heels were bruised. But Jesus bruised his head. In other words, he took the head off the demonic kingdom. He said, then I'm going to do something else. He said, I'm going to let her see. Somebody say her see. I'm going to let her seed be the one that brings mankind back. Her seed, her seed, her seed, her seed. Notice, a woman don't have a seed. But God said her seed because the, the, the child that will be born of Mary will not come from a man. The angel said unto her, the child that you are having is of the Holy Ghost. God say, man messed it up. But this time I'm sending a seed, not born of a man. He blew it the first time. He won't get a chance to blow it the second time. So the devil, why well, I feel like preaching up in here. So the devil meets Jesus out in the wilderness. And the first thing he tried was the same thing he tried in the garden. Won't you eat? Take these stones. Turn them into bread. But this time, the second Adam said, the second Adam said to him, man shall not live but by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah, somebody. So God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to leave you there. I am going to bring, geez, I feel like talking here. God said, I'm going to bring, I'm going to, what you lost, you lost life. What I'm going to send you is new life. God said, you lost life, but I'm going to send my son. In him is life. And the life shine in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This time, darkness had no more power over light. Jesus came with life, and he came with light. God said, what you lost, I sent to you. God said, now I cannot stop you from dying physically because I put my word on it. But what I can do is while you live physically, I can give you abundance. See, look, nobody should be living on the earth 70, 80, 90, 100 years and living in misery. If you're on this earth, you ought to be doing some living. If you're praising God and born again, you ought to have a smile on your face. Not based on what you have, not based on what people are saying or not saying about you. Just because you know who you are in Jesus Christ, you ought to have a smile on your face. 
What you doing walking around miserable because of things and people? You ought to be happy. If you're going to live, then live. Things happen in life, and they come to take away our joy. Amen. Sometimes we lose close people close to us, loved ones, and all kinds of things happen. Sometimes jobs shut down, or foreclosed on homes. I don't care what happens. At the end of the day, if you are still here and you're still able to breathe, you ought to give God some praise because God is not done with you as long as you're alive. Don't you die with nothing. I know I'm, finna, I'm about to preach up in here now. Listen, don't you die with nothing. Don't you die with a loss of a job. Don't you die with a loss of a home. Don't you die because your marriage ended in divorce. Why you died? Go on through your mourning if you have to mourn. Go on through whatever you got to do. But you can't die because nobody wanted to be with. Because somebody didn't want to be with you. Matter of fact, if you think about it long enough, and they really didn't want to be with you anyhow, by the time you get over the fact they didn't love you anyhow, you ought to start rejoicing when you get your common sense back and give God some praise that they gone. Sometimes nothing new can happen to something old. Get out the way. Don't die because somebody moved or, uh, wanted to move on. I'm preaching. Y'all know I'm preaching, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't die. The reason God have you alive. Sometimes, you know, I've talked about I was talking to someone one time, and they had been married a long time, and one of the spouses, God called home, and they were so sad. I said, listen, that is a reason you're still here. I know you've been married 50, 60 years, but that's still a reason you're here. God left you here for a purpose. You still have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and other people that looks up to you for direction, wisdom, and knowledge. Amen. If God wanted you, he would have took you. I know I'm preaching hard to swallow sometimes, but we need to wake up and start living. One of the, one of the great, greatest tragedies, and Jesus spoke of it. Jesus said, one of the greatest tragedies about death is to be dead while you're living. Jesus, here's the greatest tragedy about death. Some people are dead while they're living. <laughs> He said, matter of fact, he said, two ways you die. If you're not born again, he calls you spiritually dead while you're alive. You're spiritually dead. He said, once you believe in me, you pass from death unto life. There's another way you die. You're walking around with no life in you. Although you were born again, you can't get over certain things. So you're still dead while you live. Somebody said, good morning. What's so good about it? Man, you're dead. What good about it? You in it. Man, smile sometimes. What I got to smile about? Grouchy, full of anxiety, anger, bitterness. Man, wake up! It's good to get up in the morning and know God done woke you up. It's good to get in the morning and know you can move about, go around and do something. God done gave you a brand new day. The sun's shining. The birds are singing. Man, what's wrong with you? Get up and live! Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Sing unto the Lord. And don't do it for performance. Don't do it that people to put on for people. You're just you and God. You, you love God. God loves you. You'll praise God. You ain't trying to prove nothing to nobody. Oh, sorry, man. We're way out in the Himalaya and birds out there singing. Then it dawned on him. Nobody know they singing but the Lord. You ought to get in a place you don't care who see you. You don't care whether they think about you. I do this because it's between me and Jesus. The joy I have, the world didn't give me this joy. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. All right, all right. John the Baptist looked out while he was baptizing in the river Jordan, and he said, Behold, uh-oh, here come the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. John said, Behold, here come God's Son. He saw him as a sacrificial lamb. He saw him on Calvary, dying and shedding his blood. Behold, here come life. Behold, here come our Redeemer. Behold, here come our joy. Behold, here come our peace. Behold, here come our happiness. Everything is coming in Jesus. Behold, if you don't have him, you ought to be miserable. But if you have Jesus, behold, if you're down, he'll pick you up. He'll give you joy if you're in a pit. He'll give you hope in the midnight hour. This God we serve is El Shaddai. He's our God of more than enough. Satan said, y'all redeeming us showed up. I messed y'all up in the garden. I messed up y'all in the garden. I let evil came. I let death come. I brought it to you. And here come the Redeemer. He said, let me see, can I stop him? And one time Peter tried to help and cut the man off. Jesus put that thing up. The scripture must be fulfilled. I came that I may die, that they may have life. I don't need you fighting my battle. Come on, church. The devil said, let me see, can I stop him? So he went through the three temptations. Went through all kind of things. And Jesus said, nah, can't stop me. So what the devil had, this in church, the devil had two things in his hand. He says, I have death and I have the keys to evil and death. Death, hell, and the grave evil. I have these two things and he had a tight grip on them. He said, now, nobody can rip death and evil out of my hand, but here come the Redeemer. Here come our Savior. Devil said, I got it. And Jesus said, on the cross, it's finished. He dropped his head in the shoulders. He died. He had to die. But, oh, y'all walk with me. I don't need about 10 more minutes here. He died. And death said, death said, now I know, the devil said, I know I got a good grip now on death and evil. Because y'all redeemer died. But early, Come on now. but early, yeah. on the third day morning, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a sepulcher yeah. in Jerusalem, yeah. death had a wake-up call. Yeah. And the wake-up call was to the devil himself. Yeah. Death probably called him early that morning and said, something is happening yeah. down in this grave. Y'all brought him. He was dead, but I'm losing my grip. He's slipping out of my hand. He is conquering the enemy of man. The last enemy of man is death, and here's somebody who was dead. Getting up. And death Laws in victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grave lost its sting. Matter of fact, Paul picked at it and said, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? He got up and then he said in the book, uh, Revelation, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, 
Jesus stood up and said, I am he that was dead. <laughs> but I am alive. He said, let me tell the devil something. I'm not dying no more. And he that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. See, listen, you and I, we don't die. We just change worlds. Y'all ain't here, man. We just go from one world to another world. We don't die. We, we, we are transformed. We're just absent from the body, present with the Lord. You ought to give God a praise for that. We, are, we just get transformed. God say, look, watch it. God say, when I came, I took death from, Lord Jesus. Please hear me. God said, when I died on the cross and you believe in me, I took death from you. God said, you will never die. Somebody said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We die, we die. God said, no, you got it wrong. I didn't go to the cross to let you die. I died for you. He said, you will never die. He said, what happened? As soon as you leave the body, you're present with me. So what you move, you move from life to life. There was not a second of death. There was not a moment of death. You move from life to life. The second life you move to, you won't taste death no more. All right, all right, all right. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation, we're going home. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Hallelujah, church. I want you to go and look at Revelation ch chapter 21. I'm closing. Let's just let's walk down to verse 1. Put verse 1 up. Revelation 21 and 1. And, and John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for his, her, her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and I, and, and I will dwell with them, amen, and they shall be my, his people, and God shall, God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now watch what God says now. God said, this second, this second life, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, all right. All right, let me read it before I get too excited. He said in verse 3, or verse 4, and God shall wipe, come on, read it with me, church. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more, nor neither shall there be sorrow, nor crying, no pain, for the former things are passed away. No more death. No more pain. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. God, God said, this time, this time, I didn't leave it in man hand. This time, I put death and evil, pain and sorrow in my son's hand. He said, my son got up from the grave. And the devil had two things in the hand. Come here, Brother Norm. I got to show you how God did it. Stand right here so people say, hold your hand up high with that. He, the devil had two things in his hand. He had death, hell, and in, in the grave, all that, and evil. Those two things to God. When Jesus got up, he said, you got two sets of keys. And he says, he didn't ask them for the keys. He says, Give me no keys. Now I got all power. Jesus said, I got all power in my hand. Then he took the devil and he said, go sit over there. Go sit down right there. He said, go sit over there. And he said, now there's a place called the kingdom of God. He said, this time you can't come in. 
no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. I done locked you out. In the name of Jesus. Some ought to give my God a shout praise in here. Come on, magnify God. Come on, praise his name. Come on, give God glory. He paid a price that we may have the right to the tree of life. God says, you locked out. If he locked out, there can't be no more death. There can't be no more pain. There can't be no more sorrow. Well, somebody said, yeah, that's when we get to heaven. Jesus said, but don't, don't you remember what I told you? He says, I also want you to be happy on earth. So I took the keys from him. Then I gave you the keys. Why are you on earth? And this is why I told you, if you bind him on earth, I'll bind him in heaven. So that's certain thing we need to lock the devil out of. Come on, church. He has no power. He has never had power. The only power he has is what man gives him. Someone say, I am determined now to have joy the rest of my life. Come on, give God praise. I'm determined to walk in victory the rest of my life. I shall have what God want me to have. I'm going to do what God want me to do. I'm going to live every day of my life smiling, having a good time. God can take care of everything that, everything that we can't handle. God got it. Hallelujah. 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 Let the Redeemer, you may be seated, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let everybody that, got, got that, that, that heart beating right now and have breath in their body, let us give God a real praise. He got you. Covered. He got us. Covered. Woo! Woo, oh, Jesus. Ah. Let me say this, and I'm closing. Be seated. Let me talk to you real softly and, and I'm close. God knows exactly what he's doing with, with calling us from this earth. Put it this way, whenever he get ready to call us. That's why I don't even worry about nothing. Look, look, look. I tell people all the time, don't worry about death. Death don't need no help. What's going to need help is living. You work on living. Don't worry about death. It don't need your help. Work on living. But watch this. I want y'all to hear something. Heaven going to be made up of babies, small children, adolescents, I mean, so those who are just like 12, and teenagers, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 600, 700, back in the day. God going to have, heaven going to look like this. Babies to adults. That's how heaven gonna look. Now, how do how is heaven gonna look like babies from adults? You remember in the Bible when they killed all those babies trying to get Jesus? You remember when they killed all the babies trying to get Moses? Those babies went directly to heaven. Now watch this. Whatever statue and form you your body is in when you die would be the statue and form it reincarnated in. All right, watch this. Jesus was born a baby. He died a man. Why wouldn't 
when he came back from heaven, he didn't come back as a baby. He didn't come back as a baby because he had a grown man body. All right, listen at this and you're going to rejoice. The only way God can get babies and little children into the kingdom, he got to call them home to a glorious place so we can hear children laughing in the kingdom. I always said if it were up to us, it wouldn't be, be, be grown bodies in the kingdom. God is going to call one day when all of us get together, we'll hear the children laughing and playing. We'll, hear, we'll see young people. We'll see all structure of body. Jesus didn't come back as a baby. Neither did Lazarus. Wherever form they left, they came back in an adult body. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a grown man body because he didn't take me as a child. But I don't care what form I'm in, as long as I'm in the kingdom. Matter of fact, I'm done. The Bible said when we go marching in, a child going to lead us. We're going to let the children lead us. Matter of fact, Jesus said, forbid them not. Don't you stop them children from coming to me. For the kingdom of heaven is going to be full of them. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Them children, that's the kingdom. Y'all give God a shout praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You created death, evil, night, day. You created mountain and valley, light and darkness. Thank you that you still are, is in control. That's why I praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. That's it. Confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's say it again. He is Lord. Yes, Lord. shall bow every tongue go come on come on finish that yeah you got it Jesus Christ is Lord risen from the dead 
God we serve. Come on, give God one more hand for the word that he spoke to us today. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord over the dead. Amen. Uh, It shouldn't take a lot of convincing of a man or woman to surrender their souls to God, their spirits to God. If we just stop and think sometime how good it is that God loves us so much And yet we wrestle those people who have not accepted Jesus Christ. They wrestle with a decision which should be so easy. He came to give you life. And we wrestle with the decision to receive life. And many times we reject the abundance and love and all the direction God want to give us for a lack of knowledge because we don't know. So we wonder in this world so many years without his presence in our lives. The reason we are standing right now for anyone that is struggling with the decision about giving their life to Jesus Christ, they will quit struggling with that. That would be the best decision you ever made in your life. Nothing gonna come close to that. And to say, I don't know, I don't know. No, trust God, lean not to your own understanding. And so I remember when I got ready to give my life to Christ, I had already prayed, but I went to the church and it wasn't as large as this church is, but it seemed like a long way to the front to me. That morning, <laughs> my mind was so made up, I'm going to come to Jesus, I'm giving my life to Jesus. That had been 30-some years ago. Come on, come on, my brother. While I'm talking, just like this brother came, come on down. I'm going to continue to talk, but I want you to come down. Uh, I made my mind up that morning and I went walking down those aisles and it looked like I could never get to the front. It was seen like it was so long. Finally, I made it up front and I came directly from the world 
into the body of Christ. One of Sister Baby's friends asked her after service, now why did he go up there playing? Where have I been playing? I've been playing for a mighty long time. No, no matter who you are, when God changes you, he changed you. So we're standing now. Is there any person here today? Don't worry about people. Don't worry about how far the walk is. If you're here today and you know you are not God's child yet, although he has paid the price that you can be, I want you to make your mind up and say, I'm coming. I want to give Christ my life. Secondly, if you say, I've already done that. I just want to be in a church where I can learn and grow. I will need a church connection. I need a covering. Spiritually, I need someone that is my pastor. I need fellowshipping with the brothers and the sisters. I need worship. And God has said, this is your church home. You're already saved. You already have received them, but you just need that church connection. I want you to come too, if there be any, that you already have received them, but you want to make part of your Christian Life Center your home church. If there be any, be bold in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be bold in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on down, my brother. Come on down. Give God praise for him. God bless you, bro. I'm glad to see you coming. Praise God. Now, I want to give God praise. I look back on our role. I look back on our role. I think he, he may already. All right. Uh, I look back on our role. And let's get ready to give God praise. We have had, in the last about month, about 32 new members from Cain. Give God a praise for that. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. All right, come on back. Let me. Sister Harrison, have y'all turn around and face everyone. Sister Harrison. Brother Willie Graves, Christian experience. Grace. Graves. Hey, br Willie, bro, I know you. Hey, Amen. Good to see you. Um, brother Kenneth Williams, Christian experience, rededicated. Uh, okay. And then Brother David Jones, Christian experience. All right. Brother Jones, God bless you. Brother David Williams. William. Christian experiment, God bless you. Well, good to see you. Amen. All, right, all y'all have already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'll give, just shake your hand, give you the right hand of fellowship. Make you full covenant members of the Parkview Christian Life Center. You are members here now, not of just the body of Christ, but of a local church. I thank God that you have chosen to come and be a part of what God is doing here. I pray God use every aspect of your gifts and talents and that you will go out and share even with others and you grow like spiritually like you've never grown before. To God be all the praise and glory. I'm going to have you guys go right up this line here. They're going to give you some information again. God bless you. Anybody want to say anything? You, 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 all right, all right. God bless y'all. Amen. <laughs> now it is a blessing even in the midst of this pandemic. Like I said, in the last month, God have added about 30, now 35 new brothers and sisters in the Lord. And uh, that's, good, that's good growing at any time. I pray that, uh, I'm, and I'm gonna soon sit up again where we can be safe and personally meet with all our new members. We was doing that right before the pandemic. We was doing it once a month where we would uh, meet in the morning at nine and we got a chance to talk with them members, let them talk with us, get to know them a little better. So we're gonna set that up again where we can meet together 
and uh, get to know you because I, you, you know, I know people come up and they join and uh, I don't get a chance to talk to them too much. And um, I don't want that distant between knowing a little bit about you and just sitting there. Amen? All right, so we're going to begin to have our morning meeting. Amen? Once a month. All right. Uh, we want to lift up Sister uh, Jeanette Cobb, sister, got to note that, lift her up in prayer. She's uh, in the hospital, is she in the hospital? And she's dealing with some things, uh, and we want to certainly pray for her. Keep uh, the Cobb family in prayer. Uh, that's her twin sister, so, uh, you know, pray. You know her well, give her a call, amen? And we ask God blessing on her right now as she's in the hospital bed that he's just moving her body and that he begin to bring healing and his healing virtue to her. Amen. All right. Um, this Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, we will have a home going service for Brother uh, Thompson, um, Sister Juanetta Thompson's husband. Uh, she will lead our Merck team. Brother Thompson was also on our board. He has made his transition from life to life. And uh, we want to support the Thompson family, Sister Juanetta Thompson, her daughter, her son, and all the family that come with them. So it'll be 11 o'clock this Saturday here. Amen. Praise God. All right. To God be all the praise and glory. If you're here for the very first time at the Parkview Christian Life Center, let me see your hand this morning. We're the first time. My brother, sister back here. God bless y'all. God bless you, woman of God, back here. God bless you over in this corner here. Blessing. Amen. Glad to have all of you uh, that with us. So this is what we do. We love to share more with you and love on you more. So if you're here for the first time and I saw your hands up, we want to make sure you leave here and uh, with some information about the church. If that's something you need me to be praying for, write it on our prayer card. They'll give it to me. And I don't just take those cards and get rid of them. I read every last one of them and uh, I pray. Uh, so, I think we've been instructed to put them back there where I can get them now. They used to be easy to get, but I do get them and I pray over every last one of them. I'll be doing that between Monday and Tuesday. All right. Now, everyone that has their hand up, just come on right down here and meet me right down here. Give them a hand as they're coming. God bless you so much. Come on down. God bless you. Praise God. Glad to have you. What a blessing. What a blessing. Always a blessing to see new people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All righty. Brother Norm, we'll start right here. Bro, you may be have that uh uh, what they call that thing, a uh, crutch, but you move him. You ain't playing. <laughs> you move fast with it. All right. Luther Lewin, Pontiana. All right, Brother Lewis. Yeah, I'm his wife. I'm Diana Lewin. And let me just say this. We watched you. Uh, go, go ahead. No, give, give my. you all the way in Alaska. Oh, in Alaska? Wow. I didn't know we were coming on in Alaska. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> See, God is good. Yeah. I never would have knew we was in Alaska. Now you're here. Right. Relocating. Y'all relocating? 
I'm glad you found me. Now you we lie. <laughs> Brother Lewis, Sister Lewis, all right, God bless y'all so much. Glad that y'all with us today. Jacqueline Finn, and I'm visiting from New York. Sister Finn, God bless you so much. My name is Mary Ellie Vega. I was invited by Pastor Banks and his family, and this is my daughter, Eliza Sky. God bless you. So glad y'all here today. Amen. Shalonda Walker, and I'm divided by Brother Anderson. Nothing but love. Amen. Glad to have you. Amen. Give God a hand for every one of them. <laughs> Amen. So glad that y'all here. Pray God you come back again and again, and that God would begin to just involve your, uh, no, just overtake your spirit and mind throughout the week and just refresh this word and refresh newer things to you also. God is so good. I'm glad y'all here today. Amen. All right, let me pray for you. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for each and every person that's standing here today. Nothing happened by chance or accident, but you always put people in the right place at the right time so you can say what you need to say to them. This day was chosen by, divinely chosen by you. God, continue to bless them. Let doors be open like never before. Let them draw closer to you, and you will draw closer to them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right, I'm going to ask you guys to make go to uh, this door here where the ladies in the red tops, and they go, we'll take great care of you, okay? God bless you. Amen. Huh? Okay. God bless you so much. All right. Before we go, we got to hear, come on, Pastor Gann, to say something to us. Come on up here and say something. <laughs> Hadn't seen you in a minute. So it's good to have you here and um, let you share a thought with us. Praise God. Amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me. Amen. I just thank God for, first of all, having a spiritual father that I felt I just stepped back into that child state. Amen. Because I spent 11 years just listening and growing under Pastor Babers. And every Sunday I'm always preaching, but it felt good to pull my pen and pad out and take notes today, amen. Every time I hear that voice, I grow. So I thank God for uh, just the opportunity to be here today. And uh, the amazing thing about the word that he preached today is, is our messages is similar. You know, I'm teaching my congregation about the power of the Holy Spirit that worketh in us, amen. A lot of time we call on God to do things and Jesus God when God uh, finished on the sixth day and the seventh day he was finished Jesus got on that cross and rose and and he ascended back to the father he was done but he said I'm gonna leave you a helper so this is the third trimester and we got to rely more on the Holy Spirit that's within us amen a lot of time we asking Jesus to do something that the Holy Spirit want to do through us amen so rely on your helper, amen. And I thank God for just being able to come here. I got some stuff, and I'm about to write messages over there. So thank God for Pastor and Sister Babers, amen, for always encouraging me and pushing me, amen. As I, when I step out of line, they still was always there to just, uh, to just love on me. And I thank God for having spiritual parents, amen. And thank God for all of you, amen. It's been a long time. Amen, but um, all is well, and I'm just honored to be here today, and I bring you greetings from uh, Destiny Chain Minister of Alabama from Tuskegee, Alabama. Uh, we are a growing ministry, and I'm just uh, excited. I want to just share this one testimony before I sit down. God can, when God start working on us, and um, he start transforming us, I've been in Alabama now about two and a half years. Uh, those of you that know me know my testimony, I've been in and out of prison, uh, been on drugs, and and I got a call about about a month ago from the mayor of the town that I live in, and uh, he uh, 
he told me, he said, um, Pastor Gander, we've been uh, watching you since you've been here. And um, uh, the boy, we got together and we've been uh, trying to get with you. She, he said, we want you to come to the board meeting tonight about the uh, future of this town. And as I went there, they asked me to be a board member of the town, amen, that I live in. And when they asked me, I kind of I sniffed them. So I said, how in the world are they going to take an a ex-convict, <laughs> an ex-drug addict, and sit them on the board to make decisions about a town? But it's the power that worked in me, amen. Amen. I, I, I now understand it. It's the power that worketh in me. When I let the Holy Spirit be strong and let this flesh be weak, God will take us places that we never dreamed of. Amen. So God bless you. Love you. Thank you for having me today. Take care of yourself. Amen. To God be all the praise and all the glory. Uh, God sees everything in us that we don't see in ourselves. And he has given everybody great purpose. So we thank God that um, Pastor Gannon is continuing to work for the Lord and, and um, not that far from my hometown, Union Spring, just about 20 miles away, if that. So uh, when I go back home, I can stop by and see him too, amen. So God is so good. Amen. We've been blessed today. Amen. Amen. We've been so blessed today. Uh, God says, I put before you this day life and death. Then he said, just in case you don't know which one to choose, choose life. But you have a choice. I put life and death before you. Choose life. Amen, somebody. So, thank God for the word today. And I will leave by this, reiterating this one thing. There's a lot of things we blame God for. That if we had understanding, we'd be praising him for his grace and his mercy. And not complaining. God is good all the time. And God is good. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's just stand and give God one big praise in this church. Hallelujah. I know it's time to go, but hallelujah. I know it's time, but hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to, amen, uh, close out the day since I'm already standing here. The word of God has been spoken. Amen. God bless you. Amen.